When Saab was first given the go-ahead to design the Gripen, Saab engineers suddenly found themselves in the middle of an incredibly complex program. The Swedish Air Force requirement was contradictory because they wanted two different planes for air combat and attack, and when a single platform was authorized, they just combined the two specifications. There were constraints in terms of size, weight and cost, imposed by the politics and the operating conditions. There was the pressure to keep up with foreign technology like the F-15 or the F-16 in the United States and the MiG-29 and Sukhoi-27 in the Soviet Union. The aircraft being produced was expected to be a staple of Swedish defense, an effective contender for export orders for many decades, and nobody really knew how the future looked like. Finally, at a technical level, there was a disagreement on how to better proceed to strike the right balance in all these areas. In one area only, there was agreement. The main elements that make or break the success of a plane, aerodynamics, structure and propulsion, had to work together in synergy, trying to perform above the sum of the single part. Sub-engineers had to take some tough decisions that if proven incorrect down the line, could have placed the whole program at risk of cancellation. This is the story of how and why they did it. Welcome to Millennium 7 Star, the channel that helps you make sense of military history and military technology. Please stay with me till the end, because the stuff that we discuss here are hard to find on YouTube. This is the first of a series of videos where we shall try to examine in reasonable detail the technical choices made during the development of the Gripen. This material is the result of the aggregation of various public domain sources in different languages. It will be a rather technical series and if you don't know what I'm talking about, feel free to ask in the comments below. Saab already had decades of experience in Delta Canard layouts acquired with the Vigan program, so it was a natural choice considering also that so many projects in Europe were taking the same approach. There is a video discussing the reason for this in detail if you are interested. At the time, however, the advantages of Delta Canard were not clear to everybody, and a fundamental element of the equation that fly-by-wire controls was not a fully mature technology yet. Yes, because the Delta Canard can give its best in terms of maneuverability and low drag when the plane is intrinsically unstable. And since no pilot can really fly an unstable plane safely, some form of help was needed under the form of a computer controlling the commands. The Gripen configuration was chosen to be unstable, with the center of gravity placed about 10% of the aerodynamic mean cord aft of the aerodynamic center. But there's more. While instability in pitch is helpful, instability in rolling yo is not. Possibly the major drawback of Delta Canard is the fact that the stall is always asymmetric with an abrupt change of behavior when the vortices above the wing burst above the stall angle of attack. In pilot's parlance, modern Delta Canards are sometimes said to stall first in roll or yo rather than in pitch. So the flight control system had to take care of these situations too to avoid irrecoverable plane departures from control flight. And this was no small feat. The choice of placing the center of gravity in a relatively back position alone disclosed more freedom in placing the internals and the engine in a configuration that did not interfere with the area rules blending of the fuselage 
essential to minimize the wave drag. The fact that there was no tail interfering with the area rule also meant that the wing could be placed relatively forward and the tail cone could be accurately designed to minimize drag. Obviously, the position of the center of gravity and the aerodynamic center changes with the flight conditions. The aerodynamic center at transonic and supersonic speed tend to move backward to an extent such that the gripen at supersonic speed becomes neutrally stable or even marginally stable. The center of gravity changes with the fuel levels and the release of external load. Extreme care was placed to limit the excursion of the center of gravity, which is not superior to 5% of the mean aerodynamic cord of the wing. In fact, the plan has shown to be remarkably insensitive to variation of the external stores and fuel load up to 50% of the maximum takeoff weight. The gripen and pitch always handles in the same way and it needs very little trim. The close coupled position of the canards quite close to the main wing has a beneficial effect. In fact, the vortices generated by the canards reinforce the main vortices generated by the delta wing and this in turn allows very, very high instantaneous turn rates at high angle of attack. More importantly, the canards are trimmed automatically by the flight computer to optimize the lift to drag ratio for every position of the aerodynamic center, the center of gravity and, and the angle of attack. The gripen is always flying at the optimal efficiency something that is not achievable without a computer control flight system. The design of this configuration required thousands and thousands of hours in the wind tunnel where systematically different configurations were tested till the optimum compromise was identified. The engineers were able to obtain a lift-to-drag ratio of 9 better than all previous Saab fighters. At the end, the aerodynamic configuration of the Gripen was satisfactory, but the next step was going to be the most important. Was this configuration capable of supporting the qualities required for combat? Would it be capable of pointing the nose in the right direction? Would it be easy to recover after departure? All of this will be the subject of the next video. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, I'm sure you will be interested in the videos that are going to appear beside me. In the meanwhile, please like, dislike, subscribe and hit the bell so you won't miss anything. And if you could consider supporting the channel on Subscribestar and Patreon, that would be amazing. That So in the meanwhile, stay safe. Thank you very much for watching. See you the next time.